Well, hey, welcome all you wiretappers back here in the studio of Gangland Wire. We've got another riveting episode of Mafia Biographies. You know, I'm bringing you these little short Mafia Biographies. It's your host, former intelligence unit detective, Kansas City Police Department, Gary Jenkins. And today we're going to delve into the intricate life of John Handsome Johnny Roselli. He was a mobster who... His life story weaves through the gritty st- streets of Chicago, started in New York, of course, goes out to L.A., Las Vegas. And this is the gripping story of a man who was able to navigate both the criminal underworld and the covert world of espionage, but he also was able to navigate through the boardrooms and the film studios of the Hollywood major motion picture producers. It's crazy. It's we're going to uncover the different layers of handsome Johnny Roselli. He was born Filippo Sacco, July 4th, 4th of July, 1905. I didn't know he was that old. He's born in Esperia, Italy. Uh, Roselli's early life was marked by an immigration to Boston at the age of six. He was raised in a world that was shaped by criminal undertones of the Prohibition era of America. Roselli's destiny seemed sealed. His father, Vincenzo Sacco, his father, Vincenzo Sacco, had paved his way into the underworld before him. 1922, at the age of 17, Johnny Roselli faced a narcotics charge in Massachusetts. This caused him to move to New York. Then he moved to Chicago for a while. And it was during this time that young Filippo Sacco metamorphed into Johnny Roselli. That was a name that's going to resonate through the echelons of organized crime throughout the rest of the 20th century. Johnny Roselli got to Los Angeles in 1924. His story takes an unexpected turn. He gets arrested and he pleads guilty to bootlegging. He'd become entangled with the notorious Cornero brothers out in L.A. And he really had ascended to a prominent role in getting liquor imports from outside the country into Southern California. Now, while he's out there in L.A., he forges a close relationship with the underboss, later to become the boss, Jack Dragnan. This will prove uh, really instrumental to the, a lot of his career. Uh, Johnny Roselli had a connection to Al Capone going back to Chicago. In 1928, Capone invited Roselli back to Chicago and wanted to bring him into the organization. This was kind of a strategic move by Capone because he wanted to strengthen his ties between himself and the Los Angeles mobs, and Roselli would be the liaison with Jack Dragon out there, his friend. The Los Angeles assignment, of course, paves the way for the Chicago outfit to eventually infiltrate major motion picture studios unions. Uh, 1942, Roselli will be indicted on a federal labor racketeering charge, along with George Brown, former president of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees Union, and Willie Byoff, a Chicago racketeer, labor racketeer, and former pimp. Byoff will eventually turn witness and testify against these guys and be killed for his trouble later on in a Phoenix in a car bomb. 1942, with these charges pending, Johnny Roselli enlists in the United States Army. You know, World War II is going on. And he was actually able to serve three years then he, they give him an undesirable discharge because uh, he's got this case pending. And he's getting ready to go to the penitentiary. As while in the service, Roselli and several other Chicago outfit members like Frank Nitti and Paul Rica were convicted of the extortion scheme where they extracted money from various Hollywood studios. In 1943, he began a 10-year prison sentence, but through some manipulations by the outfit, uh, all these Guys that were involved with this Hollywood extortion get out in 1947. By the mid-1950s, he's shifted his focus away from Hollywood. This is, remember, Mayor Lansky's notice about Las Vegas, and Las Vegas is starting to grow in the post-war era. That's when Las Vegas just takes off and grows like crazy because they have the gambling. It's a gambling, becoming a gambling mecca. 1956, he has become the Chicago outfit and the Los Angeles mobs chief representative in Las Vegas. And his job was mainly to ensure that the Chicago mob bosses got their share of the casino revenues through the skimming. However, the Los Angeles offices of the FBI noted that he was also employed as a movie producer at Monogram Studios, and he actually did produce some movies. In an unexpected twist, Roselli found himself 
totally immersed in the Hollywood movie business. Close friendships with film producer Brian Foy and Columbia Pictures co-founder Harry Cohen opened up doors for Roselli. He got credits as a producer in early gangster movies. He maneuvered uh, effortlessly between the glitzy studios and the shadowy realms of organized crime and the outfit. And he was invaluable to the outfit, having that kind of a guy in those positions in Los Angeles and Las Vegas with, he was dating stars. I think he, I think he married a movie star, a minor movie star, but he, you know, on the surface, he looked clean as a hound's tooth. 1960s, a new chapter unfolded for our friend Johnny Roselli. Uh, this guy, I mean, he, he is a piece of work. He gets involved with the CIA. The CIA had recruited a man named Robert Mayhew, who was a former FBI agent and the kind of the fixer and main bodyguard for Howard Hughes, and, and he's moved into Los, Las Vegas by this time. So they go to Mayhew and say, you know, we want, we want some mobsters. We want to kill Fidel Castro. Well, you know, Mayhew knows Johnny Roselli because he's this, you know, figure in Los Angeles and in Las Vegas. Robert Mayhew brings Roselli in, gets him introduced some CIA agents, and, and then Roselli brings in Sam Giancana and Santo Traficante Jr., and they supposedly took money from the CIA and supposedly had some failed attempts to poison Castro, which eventually they just, you know, move on. Now, some people, some people say, you know, typical mob deal, uh, Take the money and then say, yeah, we're going to try and not do anything. The Bay of Pigs comes along and the CIA just, they like wash their hands of this whole deal. This won't come back to haunt them for a while. But eventually, I think it was the church committee brings all this back in, which, you know, that's going to that's gonna be bad on Johnny Roselli. 1970s, it's a darker narrative for our friend, handsome Johnny Roselli. He ends up testifying before this U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence about this CIA plan to kill Castro. I don't know if you remember, but but this was a big deal back in the 70s and looking at all the uh, CIA abuses over the years and things that they'd done that were way outside their, their mandate in, in many ways. The shadows deepened when his connections to another notorious event emerged. The assassination of President John F. Kennedy. There was lots of conspiracy theories about that that hint at Johnny Roselli and the Chicago Outfit's involvement, particularly when Jack Ruby, a former Chicago Outfit associate who has ended up in Dallas, kills the man who killed Kennedy. Or maybe they recruited some people to go help kill Kennedy. Maybe Richard Kane really did do it. I don't know. Just added a layer of complexity to this already intricate tale of handsome Johnny Roselli. Well, he won't make it out of the 70s. Uh, his life took a tragic turn. On August the 7th, 1976, his decomposing body was discovered in a 55-gallon drum out in the bay by Miami, Florida, or close to Miami, Florida. Met a lot of theories surrounding his death, internal mob dispute. They, they didn't like that he was involved with the CIA thing, that he did testify in front of this committee. Didn't trust him anymore. Did the CIA kill him because he knew too much? They know too much about the Kennedy assassination. You know, we'll, we'll never know. There'll always be a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of discussion about what happened to Johnny Roselli. And so I'm sure you guys have all taken part in those discussions. I know many have. I have. And I've seen them on the Facebook page, the Gangland Wire podcast group. As Facebook page, you'll see discussions about this on that. So, the legacy of handsome Johnny Roselli lives on. He had a complex life. It was a tapestry woven through the alleys of Chicago, the glamour of Hollywood, the high-stakes tables of Las Vegas. And, and, you know, his story is a testament to the interconnectedness of crime and business, labor unions, governmental power, and and they are, they're all intertwined in there, especially during the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Join us next time when we do another Underworld Bio, and we'll unearth another captivating story and a biography of one of the other many mobsters we've had in this country. So thanks, guys. And don't forget, I like to ride motorcycles, so watch out for motorcycles when you're out there. And if you got a problem with PTSD and you've been in the service, go to the website. The VA has a website with a hotline number. And drugs and alcohol always go hand in hand with PTSD. And even if you haven't been in the service, I think the VA has a lot of uh, help along those lines, uh, uh, treatment centers and things like that. But if you're not, our friend Anthony Ruggiano, former Gambino member, is a drug and alcohol counselor down in Florida. 
He has a hotline on his website, uh, anthonyruggiano.com, I think. Uh, and he's on YouTube, too. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Give me a review. Tell your friends. Share on your social media. Join our Facebook page or Facebook group. Actually, I have a page, too, but it's not very popular. We don't put very much on it. The group is where a lot of things are, are shared and a lot of discussions happen in the uh, um, replies and, and down below the pictures, if you're familiar with Facebook at all. I know a lot of y'all aren't. But a lot of people are. It's a good place to make connections with other mob fans, maybe from your area of the country. I see a lot of connections being made and people getting to know each other because they have that in common. They're all a bunch of people from Cleveland. Got a bunch from Philly on there, of course, well as New York and Chicago and Kansas City. So thanks a lot, guys.